All right, welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to go through our Evolution Wireless Digital System. Um, and so this is going to be the first of three episodes that we're going to do here, um, kind of taking you through all the ins and outs of the Evolution Wireless Digital. So the Evolution Wireless Digital is the successor to our Generation 4 uh, Evolution Wireless Systems. Um, and really, we decided not to go with a Generation 5 name because this is a huge advancement over our previous systems. And really, this system is in a class of wireless that really hasn't been done before. And there's a lot of things about this system that really make it very unique. In addition to that, it is the easiest system that we've ever made to use. And the reason for this is, especially in this caliber, because what we've identified was a lot of systems in the past had a lot of workarounds built into the system um, in order to kind of account for the lack of advancement in some of the technology, right? So there were some limitations to the technology. Um, and in order to kind of get around those limitations, <clears throat> we had to put a lot of settings and a lot of extra features into the wireless systems to make them work. With Evolution Wireless Digital, we've really kind of blown past that and we've increased and advanced the technology enough, but we're actually able to get rid of a lot of these complex workarounds. And we'll take you through what these things are with this system and how we were really able to do a system at this price point um, that has so many features. And some of these features have actually never been done uh, from any other system. So if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A. We'll try to answer them as we go. We'll have some time at the end as well if we don't get to them. And what we're going to start with is I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Rob. So again, my name is Greg, and I'm here with my colleague, Rob, and we're both from Sennheiser. And we're going to go ahead and start with unboxing a system uh, from scratch. You can really see exactly what you get in the system, and then we'll take you through some of the features. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Rob. Thanks, Greg. Okay, we're going to take a look at the Evolution Wireless Digital Set. Um, we're looking at the handheld set. Um, and of course, Evolution Wireless Digital comes in a number of different configurations. So we have the handheld set, we have a body pack set, a uh, base set with just the body pack. We have cardioid lobs and omnidirectional lobs, instrument sets, combo sets. We have all sorts of different things. But for the sake of the unboxing, we're going to look at probably one of our most popular sets, which is the uh, handheld. So just taking, taking a look at the box, uh, if you look on the side here, um, extreme close-ups, you'll see that we have uh, what the set is and the frequency range. So if you were going to have multiple uh, systems, maybe the frequency range is interesting to you. It also tells you what is included in the box. We have some marketing copy on the back. We also have a QR code for the uh, Smart Assist app. So if you go and scan that, that'll bring you to the, uh, the App Store or the Google Play Store. Um, and that is a free app. And of course, on the other side here, we have a, a bunch of different um, icons that show you the different systems that we have. So let's go ahead and open up the box and we'll, we'll see what we've got. Just like the kids on YouTube, we're gonna do a little unboxing here. All right. So what we have here is the Evolution Wireless Digital Handheld Set. The heart of the system is going to be our EM receiver. So wrapped up nicely like a holiday gift, we're gonna take that out. Do a little movie magic, and look at that, just like that, it's unwrapped. Uh, so we have our screen here with a couple of our different buttons. We'll go through every feature on the, uh, on the device, uh, but just wanted to take a minute to just quickly show you some of, the, um, some of the connections and things of that nature. So we have the uh, DC inputs, we have the outputs and the connections. Also, we have these screws on the side here. Um, those are gonna be able to be removed so that we can rack mount the system. Speaking of the rack mount, let me put that off to the side. Right underneath the receiver in the box, you're gonna see this piece of cardboard. Pop that piece of cardboard up, and what you're gonna see is a rack mount plate. So this plate actually gets joined on the bottom of the receiver. So every single system, every single system will come with uh, this plate. And this is how you join two systems together. This gets secured to the bottom. So that's a nice function. If you are not rack mounting the system and you're just gonna put it on a desk or on top of a console, um, it comes with these anti-skid feet. So those could just adhere right to the bottom. And below that we have our quarter wave antennas. The antennas uh, will rotate 360 degrees, F style connector, the NC. So that just goes right in and twists, so you get two of those. 
moving right along, we have our transmitter. So in this particular case, because it's the handheld, we have the handheld transmitter. And every transmitter comes with a on-off, uh, sorry, with a mute switch that um, allows you to mute the body pack or the transmitter. And that mute function is uh, able to be defeated. We'll tell you how in a little bit. And you have the capsule, in this case an 835, that gets screwed on to the body, just like that. So once you have the capsule on, you can open the body itself. We see the name of the product. We can drop in our two AA batteries or a rechargeable battery cell. We have lithium ion cells available. Once that's done, we can close it up. And on the bottom, you're going to see here, we've got this, uh, this red button on the, the left here is power, and we have a sync button. And that is the handheld. Of course, no handheld is complete without the clip. So uh, one quick thing on the clip. Um, there's an insert on the bottom, so depending on what part of the world you're in, you may want to take this insert out, just stick a coin in there and twist it, and this brass insert will come out that allows you to mount it on 3 8 or 5 8 mic stands. So your mic stand is very compatible, just have to remember to take that insert out. Of course, we get a pair of batteries that can go into the body pack transmitter or the handheld. So I'm going to show you the body pack as well. If this was a body pack system, that's where it would live. We take the body pack out, do a little locks, batteries go in just like that, power button is here. Again, you're going to notice there's no screen at all on Evolution Wireless Digital. There's a very good reason for that, and Greg will tell us about that later. And then of course, you have these three uh, different areas up here, a sync button, a mute switch, and the 3.5 millimeter locking connector for your lav headset or instrument uh, jack. That would be if you had a body pack system. We have some paperwork here. This is um, regulatory information, but also you have this uh, no more plastic um, little card here. So Sennheiser has been working hard to um, lower our carbon footprint and have a little more eco-friendly packaging. You may remember from G4, uh, this was all styrofoam. So with Evolution Wireless Digital, we got rid of, of much plastic as we possibly could. And this is a uh, like a corrugated fiber board, repurposed fiber board that uh, makes it much more eco-friendly. If we lift this now, we're going to see some pieces underneath. And these are also very important. So first and foremost, you have your power supply. So if we open this, you're going to see the power supply doesn't have a, uh, a connection on it. However, we do include all of the all of the different country variants in with this box. And then this would just slide on just like that, click in, and this would be ready to go for uh, the US or, or any other areas that use that two prong adapter. And in addition to that, every single system, as I said, comes with a rack mount kit. So here's one of the small things of plastic that we, we couldn't get rid of, but this is to uh, join the base plate to the bottom of the receiver. We have some plugs here, I'll show you what those are for, and some mounting screws. If we take this out, we'll see that we have rack ears. So this would go on either side of the 19 inch rack. And again, as we showed on the, uh, on the receiver itself, these screws just come right out and then this gets placed on. So this would go on one side of one receiver, then you would have another receiver. This would go on the opposite side. The joining plate goes across the bottom and that's how you'd mount two systems side by side. Otherwise, if you weren't going to rack mount two systems, but just one, you'd use this front piece. And then this basically goes over. So you'd have one system rack mounted on this side. There's a couple screws in here. You drop the screws into there, tighten that up. And then that would be going to one side of your rack and then your receiver would be on the other side. So something a little bit, well, you get the idea I was going to try to show you, but we'll see a little bit later. Uh, and with that, that's basically the overview of what's in the box. So I think, Greg, we can probably turn that over to you now, and uh, I can put a system up here. We can take a look at it. Awesome. So let's go ahead and go through some of the technical features of the Evolution Wireless Digital that really put it into a category that no other system has been in. So the first thing we want to say is, you know, what is the Evolution Wireless Digital system? Well, it's a UHF 
digital system. So very similar to the same systems you're talking about. It's not a 2.4 gigahertz system. Um, it's a full UHF system. It gives you full control. Now there's a few things about this system, again, that have never really been done before. So the first is the dynamic range that is available on the input. So the input of the system, so whether it's the body pack or the handheld, has 134 dB of dynamic range. So that is not only the most dynamic range of any wireless microphone ever made, but it's a lot more dynamic range than any other microphone on the market. So the number two systems that you'll find on the market, the highest that you'll see below Evolution Wireless Digital is about 120 dB of dynamic range. There's a lot of systems that are a lot lower than 120, but 120 is about the maximum that you'll see on any other system. 134 is actually five times more dynamic range. Got to remember this is a logarithmic scale. Um, so you get a lot more dynamic range, which means it can handle a lot more variation between the loudest and softest sound. So what does that do for us? And why does that make the system so much easier to use? Well, it means that no more do you need to worry about setting a sensitivity or audio gain offset setting inside the transmitter. It's enabled us to take that adjustment completely out of the transmitter because we know that you're going to be able to put this microphone in front of pretty much anything and you're not going to exceed the dynamic range of the system. So with a sensitivity setting or audio gain offset, um, you're going to essentially reduce the quality or the, the sensitivity of the capsule that's in there in order to prevent that super loud sound from going beyond the dynamic range of the system and clipping that system. This also means that you have to have some sort of skill level in order to you know, make it sound good. If you, if you don't set it right, you might clip, it might be too low, you might reduce the quality too much, um, and you may need to adjust it depending on if you're moving the microphone around from one to another. And for most systems, actually all systems anywhere near this price point, you, know, you would have to actually physically grab that transmitter up on the stage and adjust it there. So that makes, this system much, much easier to use because you're guaranteed to have the best possible signal. It also means you don't have to have access to that transmitter anymore because there's no more setting in there. You don't, we don't need it anymore. For reference, 134 dB is approximately a jet engine at 50 meters. So you can basically put it in front of anything and not have to worry. Um, and now you don't have to worry about accessing the transmitter. There's no screen on the transmitter because there's nothing to change inside the transmitter anymore. We're able to send all of this data all the way across. Um, and it's the first time it's ever been done uh, in any system with this much dynamic range. The next thing about this system that really puts it into a class all its own, and there is a question that is talking about this, which I'll reference here in a bit, is this system's ability to do an equidistant spacing grid. And it's able to do that equidistant spacing grid because it is intermodulation free. Now there's only a few systems um, that are capable of doing intermodulation free transmission. Um, and that's this Evolution Wireless Digital and Sennheiser's Digital 6000 and 9000. Now, one thing we, the question that came in here is, are we able to do more units because it's digital? So the answer is we are able to do a lot more units but not because it's digital, but because it is uh, intermodulation free. So not all digital systems are intermodulation free. Actually, there are only three systems that are intermodulation free and that's Evolution Wireless Digital, Digital 6000 and Digital 9000. The really unique thing about Evolution Wireless Digital is the fact that the price point is so much, it's never been done before with this equidistant grid. So what does that mean? That means that we don't have to do these complex frequency coordinations anymore. So one of the things that made wireless systems so complicated, probably the most complicated thing, is the fact that, you know, if you brought transmitters close to each other, they would interact with each other, they would generate new frequencies through intermodulation or really distortion. And then you had to figure out where those distortions were going to be. And you had to make sure you didn't put another wireless mic on top of those distortions, Otherwise, it would become interference. So this required us to do complex calculations. Manufacturers, including us, would have preset banks and channels that would have to space out these frequencies to make sure that you're not hopping on top of the intermodulation distortion, or you'd have to connect it to a computer via a network, and you'd have to do these complex calculations. Now that those distortions don't exist anymore because the system is intermodulation free, you don't have to worry about it anymore. You don't need banks and channels. You don't need to hook it up to a computer to do a frequency coordination if you're using all evolution wireless digital systems. You can place them right next to each other 
in an equidistant spacing, 600 kilohertz apart, and this will allow us to get a far higher channel count, right? So if the entire spectrum is available in the 56 megahertz the system has, you can get up to 92 channels in the same band. And if you use multiple bands, you theoretically can go even higher than that. Uh, the reason that this is really so important is a lot of people say, oh, I don't need 92 channels. But this is also the theoretical maximum, assuming that the entire spectrum is open. And realistically, almost anywhere you go, a large port of, portion of the spectrum is going to be used by other devices, by television stations, um, by all sorts of different things. And so we tend to have only limited parts of that spectrum. So if we're able to maximize the amount of channels we can get in the small parts we have available, we can then get a lot more channels. So for example, uh, if half of that spectrum is being used by television stations, you can still get 46 channels. Um, if in other systems, if half of it's being used, you may be reduced down to six or eight channels, depending on the system. So it really gives you a lot more channels in a much more difficult environment. It also makes it much easier to use because you don't have to worry about the complex coordinations. Um, and it really eliminates those intermodulation dropouts because the intermodulation doesn't exist anymore. The last thing I'm going to cover today in terms of what makes this system so easy is its new revolutionary way to communicate uh, you know, back and forth between the transmitters and the receivers. Um, and what we're doing here is instead of the IR sync, so in the past you would have your transmitter, you'd hold it up to uh, you know, the window in front of the um, receiver, you'd wait for it to sync, um, and it'd have to be six or eight inches, uh, you know, near it. Now we're using Bluetooth low energy to do the communication. So again, the wireless transmission is still happening over the UHF spectrum, but we're using Bluetooth in order to do the communication back and forth. This means that that six to eight inches is now increased to up to 125 feet when you're doing it from the receiver. And we'll talk about how you can go even further than that in other situations. Um, and it allows us to do a lot more now, instead of just having the sync information going back and forth um, or going to the transmitter rather, um, you can now, we can now build a app for this, which we've done in order to have all sorts of really cool control over it, monitoring, control. And we'll take you through all of the really cool settings in the Smart Assist app, which is a free app available for iOS and Android devices. Um, and it's available today if you have uh, an Evolution wireless digital system for free. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and Rob will start taking you through all the ports that we have available on the back of the Evolution wireless digital system. All right. Thanks, Greg. So taking a look at the back of the receiver, we're going to just work our way from left to right. Um, we're going to start with uh, the obvious part, which is the uh, DC input, which is where you'd hook up your power adapter. And not everybody knows what this is for. Uh, so just, just as a reminder, uh, it's just a little safety device. So what you do is you just put a little bend in your AC adapter cable, you slide that through, and you hook it right around, right around like that. And that will basically allow you to just plug this in. So if anybody pulls or tugs or, you know, if, if you've ever had a problem in a rack, sometimes you're pulling on different things. This just basically prevents it from getting, getting pulled out. So it makes life a little easier. Um, in addition to, of course, the power uh, socket, we have two different ways to get audio output from the device itself. We have a XLR three pin mail connection, which would go to your mixing console, or uh, you have both a balanced or unbalanced TRS TS output. So that could be, again, going to a mixing console or directly to a guitar amp or anything uh, that you might be plugging up your receiver to. Moving along, we have two antenna inputs. So again, these are the antennas that were in the box earlier. They just slide in, give a little twist, and then you can spin that up like that. Same thing on the other side. Just give it a little snap in like that. And you're good to go with the antennas. Now, the nice thing about these antenna inputs is not only do they provide RF input, but you also have the ability in a multi-channel system to have uh, DC power distribution come via the BNC cables. So that means if you were using our EWD ASA, you would not need to have this power input. You would just take that right out, and the ASA itself would handle power distribution and RF distribution via the RF inputs. So that is the, uh, that's basically the back of the device. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on 
our receiver. And Greg will take us through what makes the receiver itself so exciting. Greg, I'll hand it back to you. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'm going to do here is kind of take you from left to right through uh, the system itself um, and kind of show you what is available in terms of uh, the settings that are there or the, the you know, meters that you're going to see. So the first setting that you have all the way to the left is your RF. So this is going to actually show you the amount of signal that's coming into the receiver. So obviously, if you have a transmitter synced and connected, it's going to show you the level of that transmitter. But it's also going to show you the environment as well. So as you can see right now, there's no meter there. Well, that actually means that that particular frequency is very clean and there is no RF noise on that frequency. The next one, oh, we just saw a little bit pop in there, so maybe it's not ultra clean. Uh, the next one there is your audio frequency. So when you do have a transmitter connected, this is where you see your audio level. Um, and then the next two uh, settings that you have there are your gain control and your AF output. So I'm going to share uh, my screen here really quickly, and I'm going to kind of show you a little bit more information about how the gain structure is set up. So as we said, there's no gain structure anymore inside the transmitter. We don't need it anymore. We have enough dynamic range where you can capture anything, put it in front of anything. So it makes it easy because you don't have to worry about, you know, what setting is on that transmitter that you don't have at your front of house. But you still want to be able to have control over that system. You don't want to just say, all right, well, everybody's got a different level and hopefully they're not way off when I go to the console. So we have a digital gain setting that once we get all of that information across to the receiver, you can actually change it at the receiver side. And this will allow you to hit your digital to analog converter just right. You don't want to have all that dynamic range going into a system you don't know that can maybe handle it. Um, and then it'll also enable you to get your metering just right. This is a really good place where you can adjust for, okay, the singer on the left is really loud. The singer on the right is not so loud. And I can kind of get them leveled pretty close so they can hit that digital to analog converter similarly. The net, after we go from the digital to analog converter, you have another volume control in the AF output. Now, this is in the analog domain, and this is really designed so you can match your Evolution Wireless Digital to whatever your input device is. So traditionally, you'll have all of your gain structures different depending on how loud the singer or the instrument is that's coming in. Um, and then your AF out will usually be matched to whatever your console is. So traditionally, you'll be plugging them all into the same console. And so they'll all be at the same level. But then if next week you're using a different console, you can adjust them to match for that console. So that's just a little bit of insight on how the gain structure is kind of working across the system. If we go back over here to the receiver itself and should clear up here in just a second, uh, the next setting there is your channel. It says CH there. And what that is going to do is that gives you access to those 92 channels that are available in the system. Really, it's just the base frequency of the system. And then every 600 kilohertz, it's another channel, just an easier way for you to access everything. In theory, you can use all 92 of those channels at the same time if there's enough, if the entire spectrum is open. Um, and then the last one there, the BAT, is your battery uh, telemetry. So it's going to give you information from the transmitter right on the front panel there to show you how much battery life's left. Once we sync a system, uh, I will show you that as well. Once we go over to the right here, this is actually the access to all of that stuff and a couple other features. As you'll notice, there's no menu button, there's no windows, there's no layers. Everything you need is right here that you have access to. And pretty much everything you need to be able to do to set up a system uh, and do a show is right here. Um, and we're going to show you in a second how we have the really cool app control. But you don't. there's only a few things like firmware updates that you would need to do with the app. The rest can be done all from the front panel. And if you don't want to use the app, you, you never have to, right? So it's an either or situation, just a really great interface for it. So the first thing we have there is the gain control. If we hit the set button there, you'll see it flash. And then you can go ahead and use the up and down arrows. Uh, you can select the setting you want. You can move the gain there. Just remember when it's flashing, it's not moving until you hit the set button. So you, if you set it to 18, hit the set button. Now it's set. You can do the same thing with the AF output. Um, so if you, know, you click on that, you hit set, change the AF output to whatever you want hit set in order to save it and you're good to go. The next setting down is actually a really cool feature. So this is actually the mute lock. And so what this is gonna do is this is going to lock the mute button on the transmitter. So I guess, like we said, every single transmitter 
has a mute switch on it. Now, because there's no settings in the transmitter anymore, what's happening is that mute switch is sending information across to the receiver and it's not actually muting the transmitter. What it's doing is it's just telling the receiver, hey, I'm in the on position. Hey, I'm in the off position. And it's just telling it where it happens to be. With the mute lock, you can deactivate that from the receiver side. So if the mute lock is active, the mute doesn't do anything, it's locked out. Um, if the mute lock is off, the switch will tell the receiver to have audio and not have audio. So the big advantage here over having it in the transmitter side is you can change it in real time without having to go up on the stage and get your transmitter. So let's say you have an example of a good example, House of Worship, um, and the presenter loves to use the switch and the pastor says, I have to have my own switch. I won't be able to turn myself on and off. You give them the, the transmitter, they do that, everything's great, but then they flip the mic off and they leave. Then a volunteer comes up, they start talking into the microphone, there's no audio. So with every other system that has a switch on it that you would do that with, you either have to explain to the person on the stage how to turn the switch back on, or you have to run up to the stage yourself and flip the switch back on. With this system, because it's happening at the receiver side, in real time, you can mute lock the uh, transmitter, or I'm sorry, mute lock the receiver, and then it will ignore the, wherever the switch is at, give you audio back. And then you can unlock it and the switch becomes active again. So you can do it in real time without having to stop your show and run up on the stage. Uh, the next setting here, we're gonna do at the, at the end. Um, so the next one is the channel setting. This is where you can change your channel there from one, you know, one through 92, I believe there's 93 channels in there. Um, <clears throat> the one below that is actually your tuning. So while we have 92 channels set up each at 600 kilohertz, you can tune to any frequency in point in 25 kilohertz steps um, in its entire range. It gives you approximately 2,000, actually exactly 2,240 frequencies that you can select from. So if you are doing a complex coordination because you're mixing these systems with other systems, um, it gives you the ability to tune this to any frequency you want uh, within its tunable range. Last thing there is a full reset. So if you're like, ah, I don't know what I did, I changed a bunch of stuff, I don't wanna figure this out anymore, you can hit reset. It will give you a yes or no, just so you don't accidentally reset the unit. Um, and then you hit set and it will either do the reset or he's hit no there, so we didn't do the reset. The last setting that you're gonna have here is gonna be the auto scan. And so what this is gonna do, and we do recommend you use this every time you use the system, is it is, you're gonna hit auto scan, hit the set button, and it will now scan the environment for a clean channel. Found a nice clean channel there. In order to save that channel, you hit the set button again. If you don't like that channel, you can actually press the up arrow and it'll go to the next one, which is what he just did there. And now it saves it. So now your receiver is set to this new frequency that the system has found as nice and clean. You go ahead and tap the sync button there on the front and then you tap the sync button on the transmitter and it's just a nice quick click. And it very quickly attaches to the transmitter there. And now you have audio level. You can see that there, the AF, you have your RF signal, which is full signal because he's right there. It even tells you which antenna it's currently using and your battery telemetry comes up as well to tell you your battery life. So, um, yeah, that'll give you all sorts of really cool information there. Um, and then what we're going to do now is we'll actually uh, show you how to pair this with the app, and then we'll take you through some of the cool features of the app. So I'll hand it back over to Rob. All right. Thank you very much, Craig. We're just going to switch over. We're going to add our app. So you'll be able to see what we see. Okay. So... Um, as Greg had mentioned, you can utilize the entire system right from the front panel. You don't need to use the app, but the app makes life a whole lot easier for a lot of different reasons. Um, one, just straight up ease of use. Uh, almost everybody has an iPhone or an Android phone, uh, or particularly if you're at a facility, generally they'll have an iPad or something that's controlling something else. So it's nice to have everything in one place where you can see the activity and, and everything that's going on. and. Uh, in order to get the receivers uh, linked up to the iOS, or the iPad in this particular case, uh, it's a couple button presses, really simple. So we're gonna go ahead and just click. Uh, I'm gonna turn on this function here so you can follow along with me. 
we can see where the bouncing ball is moving. I'm going to click on Add Receivers. It's going to give me an overview of exactly what we're going to be doing. I hit Next. And it's asking, press the Sync button on the receiver for three seconds. So I'm going to come down here and press the button. And when I do that, you'll see the data light on this side is now flashing blue. The app then flips over and, and asks if you want to add the receiver to the setup. So we're going to, again, allow tracking here. We're going to click Add Receiver to Setup. It's adding it right now, and we're going to rename that device. So the default name on these systems is always EW-D. You have six characters. We're going to make Greg a little more famous than he already is. He's going to become that channel, and Greg's favorite color is blue. So now we hit Save. And then the app is going to ask if you'd like, or, or it's going to request that you pair the receiver with this particular iPad. So I'm going to hit pair. It's going to pair the two devices together to utilize Bluetooth low energy. And then next on the bottom uh, over here gets highlighted. So we're going to come over here and hit next. Now it asks um, to turn on all of your receivers. So in a multi-channel setup, of course, this is extremely important. Uh, you want to turn on all your receivers, turn off all of your transmitters. And the reason we want to turn off all the transmitters is if you don't turn off a transmitter, a scan will assume that that is an occupied channel. So what we'll do is we've now shut off our transmitters. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. The auto scan function begins and it's automatically updating the receiver. So it updated this receiver to 470.8. And uh, another feature here is if you push the up-down arrows, you can toggle between the name you've given the receiver and the actual operating frequency that it's on. So um, depending on what you'd prefer to see, you can do that. So now we're going to hit Next in the app. And now it's going to allow us to synchronize the transmitter. So we can just hit the plus for sync transmitter. There's a section on the bottom here that will show you where to press for a body pack or where to press for a handheld. So on the body packs here, just to show you, there's a sync button right there. And of course, on the handheld, as we showed, there's a sync button uh, right here, that white button. So what we'll do is turn on our transmitter. So our transmitter is now on, and I'm going to hold this up and click. And when I do that, it's going to synchronize. And now I have my body pack is, or my uh, handheld is synchronized in the app and to the receiver. And we can see that on the app by it saying synced. It also tells us what frequency range the transmitter is in, uh, as well as what type of transmitter it is. And Greg, I think that's it for synchronizing. Now, do you want to go over some of the yeah. advanced functions of what you can do with the app that makes life a little bit easier to navigate around the uh, setting up or fine tuning of a system? Absolutely. So we'll take you through all the features of the app. But first, there's actually a question here just asking if the app is, is controlling through Bluetooth. And it is, right? So we're actually having the app communicate with the receiver. You can also have the app communicate directly with the transmitter, which we'll show you here in a minute. But the syncing is also happening through Bluetooth. And what's really cool, and this is where I was telling you, you might be able to get more, even more range than 125 feet um, for the sync, is that if you initiate the sync, at the receiver. So if you press that button on the receiver, there's a Bluetooth 5.1 transmitter receiver inside of that receiver itself. And it's communicating with your uh, transmitter over Bluetooth 5.1, gets you about 125 feet of range in ideal conditions. If you sync, if you hit the sync button or the sync transmitter inside the app, the Bluetooth on your phone is going to attempt to give that information and sync to the transmitter. So it's going to tell the transmitter, hey, here's all the information you want in order to connect to the receiver. Now, since your phone is portable, you can bring your phone to wherever the transmitters are, giving you essentially unlimited range, right? So even if your receivers are a thousand feet away on the other side of the venue, you can walk up to the stage still with your phone and do all the syncing from your phone, or even if it's in another building or doesn't matter how far away it is because you're actually bringing the, the, the Bluetooth device, which is your phone, to where the transmitters are, essentially getting you unlimited range at that point. 
So let's go ahead and exit out of here and we'll take you through all the different uh, things that are available. So what you'll see here is you've got this smart center at the top. This gives you all sorts of cool information of if there's a system clipping, if something's not set up properly, if there's an issue, gives you some information for up to 16 channels. So the app can do up to 16 channels at the same time. And we'll show you a multi-channel here in a little bit. And then it gives you the name there of your system. It'll show you the battery life right here in the app. It'll also show you um, the frequency that it's on. There is one more question that we got in here basically asking about, um, you know, somebody basically commented that they really like to have the screen on the transmitter so they can look at it and see what the battery life is. Um, and what's cool is you can actually have all of that information in the app here, and you'll see them all at the same time. So you don't have to go running around looking at 20 little screens that are up on a stage. You have all that information from all of that stuff right here in the app. You can also look at the transmitters individually, which we'll uh, show you here in a second, even if they're not synced to anything. So if you go ahead and click on the name there or anywhere in that bar, this is where you can get to all the settings. So the first setting that we have here, which is unique to the app and not available on the front panel, is the lock receiver. And what this does is you turn this on and it basically deactivates the buttons on the front of the receiver. So once you set up your system, you can do this, not worry about somebody walking up to your front of house and, you know, hitting buttons and changing things. There is a special button press to defeat that just in case somebody leaves with their iPhone and now all your receivers are locked. The next setting down there is your mute lock for the transmitter. So that's the same exact thing that's on the front of the uh, receiver there. And you can go back and forth between either of those. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you do it in the app or on the uh, receiver. The next one is your set frequency. So this is the same as that tune that you have on the front there. You can go ahead and uh, select any frequency within its range, hit OK. And once you hit the OK button, you'll see the receiver quickly changes to that. You can then manually sync the transmitter by clicking the sync transmitter button. Um, and now it's looking for a transmitter. Again, your phone is looking for the transmitter and will send all this information to the transmitter, not the receiver, because we started it from the phone. And again, you can do it either way. Once you set, even if you set the frequency in the app, you can still do the sync from the receiver if you want. Um, you have the avail availability to do it either way. The next setting below that is the auto scan me. So this is actually doing that entire process uh, automatically. So it'll scan for a channel, find the first available channel, set the receiver to that channel, and then initiate the sync process from your phone automatically. So if you wanna set up this one channel uh, and you wanna go automated through the whole process, you can do it this way and it'll give you a nice clean channel that's already been scanned and you know ready to be used. As you can see, it's doing it automatically, sync to the device. Everything is you know nice and easy. The last couple settings there are, I believe, your gain settings. So if you hit that little down arrow, uh, so you have the two gain settings. Again, same gain settings that are on the front of the receiver. Uh, just remember, when you scroll through, it doesn't scroll through automatically. You scroll through to the, the one that you want, and then when you hit the OK button, it will change it. Another piece of information here is going to be the firmware up versions on the uh, receiver and on the transmitter. So you can check to see if you need updates or anything like that, make sure they're matching. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. The next settings we have are a little bit more global, which are these three little buttons or three little dots up in the top right corner there. So if you click on those three dots, another menu comes up. Now, this is where you can add more devices. You can edit your current devices, or you can delete devices that you have. This is also where you can do a global auto scan. And so this is very similar to the auto scan me, but instead of doing it for the one channel you're on, this will do it for all channels that are connected to the app um, and then initiate the sync process for all the channels. So you can do it once, let's so say you have 16 channels connected, you can do it once and you know it'll do all of them automatically. It's very quick. In a few minutes, we're gonna set up a four channel system and you'll see this in action. The last setting here is your check transmitter. So if you're just like, I just wanna be able to grab a transmitter and see the information about it. So that's where I usually looked at that screen. Well, super easy, take out the giant screen on your phone uh, go ahead and click check transmitter, 
tap the power button on the transmitter and up comes all the information. But now instead of only seeing the one window that's available and having to scroll through the tiny little screen, you get all the information right in front of you for everything. So it'll tell you the battery life, it'll tell you what channel it's on, it'll tell you the frequency, it'll tell you the device that's there, it'll tell you if it's synced to a system or not, which uh, no other system will do. Um, it will tell you the firmware version that it's on. And if it's a handheld, it will tell you what capsule you have screwed into the top of it. So I think he's going to go ahead and hit that check transmitter. You click the power button quickly and boom, this happens to have an MD835. Um, but I'll show you all the other capsules that we have available. Um, and in the next webinar, we're going to actually go through all of the different options that are available to give you um, not only the best sound quality, but a, a, a lot of different sound quality options. So there's a few more things in the app uh, that we'll take you through. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. First thing we're going to show you here is the support hub in the bottom left corner. So you click on the support hub and this gives you all sorts of cool information. So there's a bunch of quick tips here, really easy. I don't remember how to do this. There's a lot of cool stuff here. It also shows you, you know, for those your rapper friends, how to hold a microphone um, and, you know, also how to screw in the rack kits, all sorts of great, really fast tips for you. The next tab over is our Sound Academy. And what this is, is a whole bunch of videos. I got my friend Benny here, who is great at explaining this. So if you say, hey, I watched this webinar. I don't really remember what he said, how to do this thing. How do I add devices? You got right in the app, a whole bunch of really great one to three minute videos from Benny explaining how to do it again, right at your fingertips. The last thing that we have there is the full manual. So not only do you have the full manual right here, you don't have to go Googling it or searching for some paper, but you can actually get through FAQs and you can search the entire manual and FAQs for anything. So if you just start typing something in, it will start searching that entire manual and bring up all the relevant information. So you typed in gain, it says we found gain eight times in the manual. You click on it and it brings you right to that setting. There's also some automation inside the manual, which is really cool because it'll actually give you a little bit more detail as to what is going on there. So outside the support hub, the last thing we're gonna show you is the settings tab on the bottom right corner. This is where you can do firmware updates. So if there's a firmware update for the receiver or the transmitter, you can do it here. It tells you the version of the app that you're using. You can also change the language of the app itself. And this has got, um, I think nine different languages we have in there now. Um, and then this will also give you some more legal information if you need any uh, more details there for that kind of stuff back in the past last screen. And so that's really everything we got going on in the app. There's always updates coming. And again, it's all free with the system. So you can download it. You can actually download it now if you want. There's a demo mode, even if you don't have the system that you can play around with it, see how it works, see all the information you'll be able to see right at your fingertips. Um, and it's a really cool way and an easy way to kind of have access to everything. Um, and then all the settings are happening here through the app or the front panel. Um, as you could remember from before, there's a question here of, can we connect this system to WSM? So this is the successor to our 100 series G4, which is not going to connect to WSM. Many of the functions that you would have used in WSM no longer needed with this system due to the you know, not needing to do the complex frequency coordination and being able to monitor everything through the app. But as the successors to our higher level systems come out in the future, we will be sure to add a whole lot of great features there as well. So uh, yeah, so that's the app. And I think what we're going to do now is actually kind of build a four channel system. Um, and, you know, Rob will start getting that going. We'll unshare the the app here and it'll kind of walk you through how we can build it and then also wiring together with a splitter so we can take two antennas and we can split those two antennas to go to multiple channels in this scenario we're going to connect four uh, receivers to a single splitter but you can daisy chain those splitters you can connect them together and you can essentially have an unlimited number of channels with the ewd asa you'll run out of spectrum far before you'll run out of too many splitters all right, Rob, if you want to go ahead and unshare the app there, it'll bring your uh, picture up, and then you can uh, kind of show them what you're doing with uh, putting together the rack kit. Sure. All right, so we're going to get a, uh, a little bit of an overkill. You, just a regular screwdriver would be fine, but we're trying to speed things up a little bit. So what we're going to do is just put together the rack system. So um, as you said, these screws here, uh, they're 
already in when you when you open or unbox the system. You're going to take them out. So on this side, I've already have them out. You just put the rack ear on, and then tighten that up. And do the same thing on the other one. So when once you do that, now in this particular case, we're making a a 19 inch rack. So you're going to see that we have one on one on each side. So I have one on the left and one on the right. And then in order to join the bottom together, I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. We're going to take that plate. Again, that plate came standard with the Evolution Wireless system. We didn't have to buy it. We didn't have to spend 50 euro, 50 bucks. It came with it. It also came with a little bag of screws, which we saw when we pulled out the rack mount kit. So we're going to put most of these in, some of these in. We're going to cheat a little bit. I don't, I don't think everyone needs to watch me screw all these in, but we'll just get four of them in instead of all six. And then we'll, uh, we'll show you how to hook up a system. So that's going to be four channels there, or two channels there. I'm going to flip that over. And a little bit of... Uh, Poetic license and movie magic. We already had this one put together. I'm sure you won't mind. So, Greg, while I'm setting this up here, um, we're going to talk a little bit about this, which is the uh, this is the EWD ASA. This is an active antenna splitter. Uh, it's going to provide power and RF distribution to the setup. Greg, why why is it important to have an antenna splitter when you're using wireless? Why can't I just put all the rabbit ears on the back of it and go that way? Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And so when you have all of those antennas kind of put together um, in the same space, it can cause, you know, when the signal comes in some overload there as well. And so what we always want to do, and this is really good practice for all RF systems, um, regardless of whether it's EWD or anything else, we're kind of getting you down to two antennas. Now, two antennas can handle pretty much as many channels as you want. So don't worry about having a certain number of channels off of you know, a single pair of antennas. Um, and additionally, it'll also allow us to remote those antennas. So with the quarter wave antennas, those are going to need to be attached to a unit themselves. But when you go up to our larger half wave antennas, or if you go to any of the directional, omni, or even circularly polarized antennas, you can remote those antennas, you can put them um, in another location to get you even more range, and it will actually give you, with the different antenna types, can give you far more range. So with the quarter wave antennas on the back of the unit, you can expect in an ideal situation to get about 330 feet or 100 meters of range with that system. That's pretty comparable to our generation four system for a one channel system. With the directional antennas, we actually did a test, actually one of our dealers here, NLFX did a, uh, a test that they did online. And he was actually able to get about 870 feet using a pair of our new ADP UHF directional antennas with the system. So in meters, it's about 250, a little bit more than 250 meters. Um, so really you can get increased range. Of course, that's gonna depend on the environment. Um, but the great thing about Evolution Wireless Digital is because it's intermodulation free and because it has less power because it needs so much power, the environment is so much cleaner. So the one thing most people don't realize is that, um, in a, if you're doing a one channel walk test, like I have one channel of a, of a high powered analog system and I have one channel of an evolution wireless digital, you might not notice any additional range out of the evolution wireless digital. But as you get more and more channels of a system that does produce intermodulation, the noise floor increases and increases and increases. And as the you get more and more channels, you just continue to get more and more noise floor. Um, and so that increased noise floor reduces the range of all of the systems because the range, once it gets down close to the noise floor, that's when you lose your signal. With Evolution Wireless Digital, because the environment is so much cleaner, as you get more and more channels, you don't really lose any of the range. And so one channel to one channel, they're very similar, very comparable. You might even out of a 30 milliwatt system get slightly more range uh, in an analog system 
but they're really comparable. Um, once you get up to 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 systems, you'll notice the range continue to drop drastically on those intermodulation systems, whereas this system will not drop drastically. And so this is a really big advantage um, there and having those antennas being placed in a proper place with proper antennas, um, that will definitely give you a really, really robust system. Um, and kind of lets you go that way. Another thing that uh, Rob is putting the rack kit there on the uh, ASA, what's really cool is because all of the EWDs include a single or a double rack kit, um, even though the ASAs don't include their own rack kits, you'll actually have extra rack kits when you buy the systems because you'll buy two systems. It'll come with a, each with a double rack kit, so you'll get some extras. So you see he's putting together that one channel rack, and then you can front mount those antennas there if you want. There's an extension kit to front mount them, um, or you can just put the little plugs in and remote mount them, which is obviously going to be your most ideal scenario. Um, and then what I think Rob's going to do now is actually show you how to wire this up. And so what we're going to do is it has two inputs on the splitter. And really the way you want to think about it is, um, you know, there's an A, a whole side of the splitter is for the A antennas and a whole side of the splitter is for your B antennas. And so you'll come in through the A antenna, you'll have your four A outputs. So it's split it into four more signals. And then you basically go into your corresponding antennas on each channel. You'll do the same thing for the other side. Um, and then not only will it take the signal for all of your frequencies, split it to all of your receivers, but the ASA EWD will actually power these splitters going right here. So um, you'll actually, in order to get all five of these units, so the four channels and the uh, splitter itself powered, you only need one uh, of those power adapters, and then all five units will actually get power there. The power for the receivers is supplied through those BNC cables he is connecting now. So it says, do I need, there's a question that came in here. It says, do we need to connect all the receivers together or can I go directly into my Mix Pre 6? So I believe the Mix Pre 6 has four microphone level inputs. So you would come audio out of those four inputs uh, from the four channels here into your Mix Pre. Um, so any mixer, including a Mix Pre, uh, you know, you'll plug them into as if they were standard microphones. So hopefully that answers your question there. Uh, the splitter is actually only for the RF signal coming from you know, the, the radio frequencies over the air, and it's splitting it from two antennas out to all your receivers. You can daisy chain, or you can connect two of those splitters together to do eight channels, and then you can daisy chain uh, additional ones to do essentially an unlimited number of channels. Uh, yeah, cool. So I think Rob's got this pretty much hooked up here. We've got a full wired distribution and power coming. That's the ADP UHF that we're connecting there. You always wanna have two antennas connected to any system uh, due to diversity. Uh, and the reason for that is, you know, as the wireless uh, signal goes out into the space, uh, sometimes it will bounce off of two things and hit the receiver at the, or hit the antenna at the same time out of phase with each other. And that can happen at any time. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we have two antennas in two different locations. So when it does happen in one location, we can switch to the other antenna. Um, and this system actually has new intelligence switching diversity, which allow the, to switch from one to another up to every 0.85 millisecond. So that's less than a millisecond, which is a thousandth of a second. And it can do that back and forth. And the actual switching takes a few nanoseconds. So it's ridiculously fast. So let's go ahead and get this set up. Looks like Rob's ready to go here. All right, so we just hit the uh, power button, but we can't actually just hit the power button without a little bit of help from our power. Sorry about that little anticlimactic, my fault. We hit the power button and it brings up all of our Evolution Wireless digital systems. And they are all powered up together. And there they are, they all just turned on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hook up our Evolution Wireless Digital Systems to the app. So, Greg, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again here. Yep. That's coming over. And again, um, for this particular, uh, particular demo, um, we have a four-channel system, but you can easily do an eight-channel system. Um, right now we have half of this splitter doing um, 
the, what is the A antenna and the B antenna, but you can actually have, uh, put a jumper. All the cables are included when you purchase the EWD ASA. Um, so you have all the cables that are necessary to make this a, a eight channel A splitter, and then the one that would go here would be an eight channel B splitter, and that would take care of power and RF distribution very easily for an eight channel setup. Okay, so we are going to, uh, we're gonna add receivers here. So the same thing we did with a single channel, we're gonna now do with, with uh, all of these. So we come over and we, it wants us to hit the, the sync buttons. Push that back a little bit. So all you have to do is push and hold and push and hold. Three seconds is all it needs. I'll, I can do both of these together. And when you do that, you see all the data lights start flashing, indicating that they are ready to be set up. And we have all of them show up in the app. And all we have to do is click Add Receiver to Setup. It's going to, um, uh, so this was already paired, so that's OK. Uh, we're going to add this receiver. It is blinking. We're going to rename it from Rob to um, Susan. And Susan's favorite color is purple. We hit save. It asks if we want a pair. We do want a pair. We're going to keep going. And we're just going to add each of these to the setup. We'll keep that exactly the same. We'll pair that. Uh, let's see this one. I gotta remove. Okay, it was two nine nine. We're just gonna delete that one so we can re-add it. All right, there we go. So we are going to reset our. That one and this one. Okay, and then they'll come back up. When you do multiple demos a day, sometimes you forget to reset the system there. Sorry about that. We're going to save that one, and we'll do the same thing with this last one. Pair. And save and pair. Okay, so now all of these receivers are going to be paired to this specific device. Um, so from there, we can hit the next button. Now, again, multi-channel system, so it's going to ask us to make sure that we shut off all of our transmitters, because any transmitter that is on is an active station, is an active, uh, is an active carrier, so we don't want that. And then we're going to hit the next button. It's going to do an auto scan, and we can watch. Everything will update on these frequencies. So it says updating, and just like that, it's changing the frequencies. And it has found four free frequencies. That's all set. All receivers are updated. We hit the next button, and it says, you're almost done. What do you need to do next? You need to sync transmitters. We're going to start with Susan. So if I hit sync transmitter, I turn the power on here. And again, I'm going to just hit this, this uh, sync button on the bottom. And then just like that, you see all the stuff pop up there for Susan. And then we're going to do the next one. will be the acoustic guitar. Sync transmitter. It's going to be a body pack. So in this particular case, when I open the system, I turn the power on, and then the sync button is here. I hit sync, and we see the acoustic guitar come all the way up. Same thing for the other systems. I won't go through uh, syncing all of them, but that is a quick overview of how you get those transmitters done. When you hit done, you can come right back into the main screen. You'll see that we have all of those transmitters. So if I needed to make any kind of an adjustment, um, maybe I need to bring the gain down for Susan, I can very quickly make that adjustment, click OK. And then the next time I synchronize the transmitter, it will automatically take all that information and dump it into the transmitter. Yeah. And the cool thing is, is once you've done that, you're done. You're on clean frequencies that you know you're going to be able to use, and you've got audio running through the system already.
So there's nothing else to do after that. So you can actually set up these systems very quickly. We did a test uh, where we're like, how fast can we set up four systems after they're already powered on? And we did the, uh, sync, the scan and sync and audio all within 59 seconds in a video there. So if anyone wants to see that, you just let me know. Um, and so, um, you know, at that, that's what we have for our Evolution Wireless Digital. I'm gonna go ahead and share a little bit of a summary that we have here. Um, not only to show you recap a little bit about some of the features that we already talked about today, like the uh, staggering dynamic range, its ability to do an equidistant frequency grid, which again is not something uh, any system at this price point can do. Uh, the Bluetooth low energy for the sync and control of that app that we were doing there. Um, and then there's a whole lot of other features that we didn't talk about today, but we've got two more episodes where we'll go through all of them. Things like the ultra low latency, the sound quality, the RF capabilities of this, and the whole multitude of capsules and elements that are available. So not only is it going to give you the best sound quality on the market, but you're going to have tons of sonic options for that. And on the second webinar, we're going to go through all of those different options that you have available. Um, and then the third webinar, we're going to show you really how this operates on a spectrum analyzer um, and really deep dive deep into the RF characteristics of Evolution Wireless Digital. So we're happy to hang out for a few more minutes. If you have any other questions, put them in the chat there. I actually saw one question and I don't know the answer to it. So I'm going to have Rob take a look. There's a question here that says, does the mic clip have plastic threads? So I know the uh, adapter, the European adapter is all brass or metal in there. Um, but if you want to take a look, we can see what kind of threads are on the other side there. Uh, would be pretty cool. And then while you're looking at that in the clip, uh, there's somebody who says he's eagerly awaiting the ENGP option for this. So as we said, this is the first entry into the full family of Evolution Wireless Digital, which is the successor to our Evolution Wireless Generation 4. Um, and so obviously, as uh, the years progress, you're going to see more and more entries into this uh, market. So definitely uh, look forward to that. And uh, just to answer John's question, uh, thank you for the question very much, John. Uh, I, I understand why you're asking it. If you've ever been on stage, uh, you know sometimes that can, that can bite you. Um, this clip does still have the plastic threads. So uh, if you're if you're using um, if you're taking these on and off a ton, uh, it's also a little easier to get the um, quick release um, quick release products that allows you to just thread something onto the mic stand and then hit the button and pull it off. Not ideal, but we'll take it as a suggestion for the uh, the next update. Cool. Well, if you guys have any other questions, we're happy to hang out for a few minutes. Uh, otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day, and hopefully we'll see you at the next two episodes.